I'm super curious if I've done everything right. Hey everyone, I'm streaming to three platforms right now using a special software that channels the stream to different platforms, to Facebook, to YouTube, and to LinkedIn. But nevertheless, even if it's not live at the moment, I will adapt on the fly. So greetings, my dear audience. Welcome to this little gig. Uh, today I want to talk to you about seven, I'm sorry, nine signs that you can be a great speaker. Not just signs, but nine hidden signs something that we will point out that you might not even realize about yourself but by us pointing this out you will start thinking about your potential to become a speaker disregarding the fact if you considered yourself to be a speaker or uh, thought that you might never be the one right so you're underestimating yourself, just a small disclaimer right away. So right off the bat, the first sign that you, the first hidden sign that you can be a great speaker, is that you want to speak. You can be an expert or not, but maybe you even feel like that you're super terrible in public speaking and even the uh, single thought the mere thought about going and performing somewhere gives you goosebumps but nevertheless you enjoy speaking and delivering your thought maybe around your friends or your partners uh, wherever it is you have the desire to speak you have this in you you have these ideas and willingness and you're eager and maybe something inhibits you but the mere fact that you have this in you already puts you on the map of potential great speaker so that's a sign number one you have something to say and you want to speak second one actually actually let me back pedal a little bit if you don't mind this is something that I missed. I wanted to address four fake obstacles that we as English second language speakers think about ourselves and, you know, think like something that we cannot uh, overcome or something that blocks us from going and delivering speeches in English. So first, obvious fake obstacles you think that you have a low level of english and i hear you loud and clear i've been there my friend and i always thought that there's gonna be a perfect time there's gonna be this moment in time in the future in the bright bright future when i'll be fully well versed and conversant with all the english words but it never happens this way. Just like just like in life, there's never perfect time. So you you should start right away and adapt on the fly. Believe it or not, if you start combining learning the language with learning the skill of public speaking, these two studies, learnings will come together and they will actually complement each other and you will become much better public speaker as you're becoming a much better English speaker. Does that make sense? Just like when people starting to learn general English and they need to use it at work, I always, uh, you know, uh, strongly recommending these people to start from learning the professional dictionary and learn the 
words and collocations that, that might be useful for them at work. There's no point, it's pointless to start learning general English if you need to use it at work in particular. Then, you feel another fake obstacle. You feel like you have a bad voice. I know, we all listen to ourselves and it feels like, how come we sound like that, right? We have this sort of embarrassment and awkwardness when we hear our own voice. Maybe you're, that's not you, but some people are just not in fond of their own voice. Here's a reply for you. Your voice is what makes you unique. You don't need to be universal. You know what? You don't need to be commenting uh, football or basketball. What you want is to show people your uniqueness. Put it out there. And by having this voice that you have, that's this natural gift of the nature that you have been given, you can capitalize it on you can capitalize on it. So don't be afraid, just talk, 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 and guess what? Sooner or later you'll fall in love with your own voice when you see that so many people are following your lead. Next fake obstacle is fear of people. You know, that in psychology, there is a school of thought. There is like this idea that things that we fear the most are the things that we're going to enjoy the most. I know this from sexual studies. Things that you're embarrassed about the most are secretly kind of enticing you in a big, big, big way. So that's... That's a that's a learning about high hanging fruit. You can use you can live uh, your life and only take the low hanging fruits, right? But why don't you take a chance and uh, steer the pot a little bit, and maybe just maybe you'll find that you'll find yourself in the position to do things that you never expected to do in the first place. So don't think that people gonna eat you. People are good for the most part. All right, there are jerks, but all of these jerks and haters will only make you better. Okay? Moving along. So, that was just a short preface. And I already told you about the first sign of a hidden sign of a great speaker. That if you like to talk, if you have ideas and you feel this desire to add your two cents into conversation, that's a great sign that you can be a prolific speaker. Second sign, sign, you get positive unsolicited feedback from strangers or your friends, better strangers. Like when you speak and someone says, hey man, there's interesting, interesting story. That is a sign that you should go and try to speak in front of the audience. By the way, you, you do know that public speaking is not merely, is not solely talking to a lot of people. It's, it could, like, you can deliver, public speaking is actually what I'm doing right now. This could be like any online conference or even a web call. It can be delivering your idea to a group of colleagues, two, three people. All that is combined into this one term, which is public speaking. By the way, I have a course on it specifically for business professionals, for C-level um, executives, for entrepreneurs, for infopreneurs who need to perform and localize their business and expand it to foreign markets. That's what I do. If you're interested, drop me a line. But back to the talk. So strangers give you feedback. Uh, and another yet nonetheless significant sign is that you are good in, at, in telling stories. You're a great storyteller. You're a great narrator, right? So you have you might have a bunch of stories, but stories, like why am I um, emphasizing on this is that because stories is what make create connection between people. 
And if you're naturally a great storyteller, you won't find it difficult to incorporate stories from your life or from history books or from any, any source. It won't be difficult for you to incorporate stories inside of your presentation. That's why telling stories and rely on personal experience is a great sign that you can be an amazing public speaker. Um, next sign, you know how to pace yourself. This is another small tool from uh, Tools of Trade, a chapter from my course. Uh, the tool of uh, s delivering your presentation in the slow motion. Believe it or not, there is no such thing as to talk too fast in public speaking. We, we tend to believe that we speak really slow, but in reality, the receiving party always kind of feels that you are rushing somewhere. So for me, there's actually a trick. If you hold your hands, you cannot speak fast. It's a really cool psychological trick. Right now, holding my hands, I cannot speak fast. So if you have this natural predisposition and you always speak slow, or you know how to make pauses, you know how to pace yourself, that's a brilliant sign that you will be great delivering your idea on stage. Next sign, you are a teacher. Oh, and I'm not talking about the profession, I'm talking about the state of mind. There are a lot of people who just want to share their knowledge and not impose their knowledge like, this is right, I'm right, you are wrong. No, but more like coaches, like someone who are taking care of their audience and in, in a beautiful and caring way, delivering some ideas that they feel like are worth sharing. That's the sign number five, I think. Another great sign, and I, and I can testify to this like no other. You like to write. If you like to write, basically writing is a type of public speaking. Different, it's, it's even, even, even more so, public speaking and uh, talking to audience is a type of writing. But the, in, instead of your canvas, you have the audience, right? So if you like writing, it's a good sign that you can be a great public speaker. Uh, I, I started writing a while ago and I never liked to read, believe it or not. So I'm not, I'm not a big reader. And I was always coming from the place of belief that if you don't read a lot, you won't make a great writer which turned out to be a total bull, <laughs> false information. You can be a great writer, it's just something that, is, uh, that you can develop or that is this something that is God-given. And if you want to, and in my case, I started writing five, six years ago and I only became public speaker roughly a year ago. Um, not to mention like my business years, when I was talking to deliver a presentation and delivered presentation to my customers or, or my employees. But roughly a year ago, I started doing this uh, content generation project. So I generate content, I do live streams, and I consider to be uh, a public, myself to be a public speaker. So it all started with the writing. And... Um, and another, and yet another thing is that you can improve and improvise on the fly. So if it's okay, it's not a big problem for you to uh, sort of add your opinion or you have an opinion on, on pretty much 
any topic, so you're an all-around well-versed person, it's also a great sign that, for example, a Q&A section, section, the question and answers, which I adore, I really like, and I, I really, that's my bread and butter. In the public speak, speak speeches, I, I really admire. Um, first of all, I, I like questions. And, um, for example, if you are a well-rounded uh, 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 person, no question will catch you uh, with your pants down, right? So, it's just something that you really, really uh, might enjoy to, imp to improvise. Another important condition, another important uh, thing that you might want to have is that you're full of energy and you're a positive person. If you are not half empty but half full and you believe that you can live this world in a better shape than when you enter this world, that just makes you a, an endless optimist. I myself am an undeniable optimist and unshakable an optimist. And I want to help people believe in themselves more and stand out and, you know, beat their own insecurities by going out, uh, standing on stage or delivering uh, these uh, speeches online or offline. Well, that's the world that I try to in a, you know, build. There are a lot of people like that. And moreover, if you are empathetic, you're not only the optimist, but you're empathetic. You like communication. You like, you know how to listen. You know how to give um, proper, how to properly criticize people, right? We know about the rule. We don't criticize people. We only criticize action. You know how to, you know, kind of support people. Um, so, I mean, you are just, a great person, like a uh, people-centric person, and people love to be uh, around you. You can make a case that sp great speakers are bored. And that is true. Similarly to the natural leaders. I had uh, a guy, I had a, a guest on my podcast. If you don't know, I have a podcast. Mark Harshberg, he's a, he's a writer and author of the book, a Career Toolkit. And he told me that, um, yeah, there are definitely a lot of leaders who are just born, so who are like preconditioned uh, due to their upbringing and or social circumstances to be great with people, extroverts. But it doesn't make that you cannot learn these skills. It's absolutely possible. Take me, for example, in my high school and university, I was super uptight and uh, insecure boy who really, this is my personal information, but I actually lost my virginity at a really, really old age. And believe me, I had so many, so many insecurities, so much doubt about myself, but look at me now. So if I, if I could make it, you can make it as well. So don't think that that only only the uh, chosen ones can perform on stage or perform online. No, it's not the case. Everyone can do it. You just have to have proper guidance and believe in yourself. Uh, I also would like to point out that if you like seeing other people, if you like listening to podcasts, if you don't, if you even more like, uh, if you really even enjoy watching podcasts more than listening to podcasts, it means that you like to see this and feel this energy. You, as we are socially attuned uh, animals, we can sense the energy. I, for one, love seeing seeing people talking to each other. I, I like to scan their faces. I like to see their emotions. So that's actually a, a sign of empathy uh, and the sign that you will be a great, great speaker uh, solely based on that on this uh, fact. And um, I think 
not, last but not the least, in addition to empathetic, um, you know, type of personality, is that you have a way with words. I already told the, about this in some of my blog, blog posts that you don't need, and a lot of people ask me, like, dude, where have you learned the language? And I, I actually was, chill, I'm, I'm guilty as charged, I was using big words and I wanted to impress people with the knowledge of these fancy, fancy funky words. But it took me 10 years and just recently I realized that the simpler your language, the better. Because the ideas that go viral are actually short and concise. Because for your idea to go viral, it should be really, really understandable to all, all the layers, all the social groups, from truck drivers to scientists and business professionals, right? If you talk like a scientist, only scientists will understand you. If you talk like a truck driver, both scientists and truck drivers will understand you. So uh, you can use big words uh, and having get way with words is great. But at the same time, don't be afraid that not knowing a lot of words will, will put you in this um, hor hor horrifying um, position where you will be embarrassed. Moreover, embarrassment, you know, or feeling awkward or not feeling great about yourself is a part of, of the game. So don't be hard on yourself. To close up, I want to say that I am 33. I just turned, uh, yesterday I turned, uh, on Friday I turned 33 years of age. And it's only now that I am realizing how desperately I need the audience, how desperately I want to speak and how desperately I want to inspire other people to do great things, to be themselves and by playing to their natural strength, stand out and actually show what they got. Because I believe that you don't want to, you don't want to, you don't need to be someone else to show something amazing. You should just dig deep, reflect on your life and dig deep inside and speak about that. Thank you so much, guys. I hope this list will kind of persuade someone to maybe think about the um, about doing public speech, maybe pitch an idea to a group of people or pitch your services to uh, American or any English-speaking clients. And uh, just wishing you uh, a great deal of luck. And uh, thank you so much for joining me in this trip. Cheers.